So, if you want to get items around really, really quickly, then use those impulse item ducts, because they move stuff a lot quicker than the basic item ducts. But the basic item ducts aren't too bad, they're definitely quicker than the normal Billcraft pipes. Another great thing about these pipes is that they have filters on them. So let's say we had a little system here. Okay, let's just have a really basic little sorting system here, where we put items in, and we just click on there, as you can see, and that will turn it in. And if you right click with an empty hand, on this little section here, you'll see an item filter. And there's a blacklist or a whitelist. There's use auto dictionary or ignore it, and use metadata or ignore metadata. So, pretty simple. And also you can enable low or disable redstone signal, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so basically this can be activated by a redstone signal if you put it to high, or will turn off if you uh, activate a redstone signal if you set it to low. So pretty basic redstone stuff like on all the other machines. Okay. So what we're going to do is, let's say for example, we only want to take out, uh, for example, on a whitelist, you say, if I put on dirt on the whitelist, then if I put, say, a fluid duct in there, it won't get taken out, cobblestone won't get taken out, but if I put a piece of dirt in there, it will get taken out and taken down the system, and put into the nearest inventory possible. Of course, if I get some uh, vacuum pipe, uh, sorry, if I get the crescent hammer and use to do that, You'll see that I'll go into vacuum mode, and suddenly, because this is pulling the dirt that way, put a piece of dirt in there, and you'll see the dirt will carry along because of the vacuum and go to here. So that's the use of those vacuum pipes. Okay, but let's say we put it to blacklist. Ooh. Let's say we want to blacklist this. Okay, if we blacklist this, then dirt will not get transferred. However, anything else, like hardened glass or a terrain smasher, will get transported. So a very nice way of being able to sort items quite simply. Okay, and so yeah, let's just make a little sorting of here. So let's say whitelist uh, that dirt stone, uh, gravel, and cobblestone. Okay, and then we'll say here, uh, just accept cobblestone and stone, and then we'll say accept gravel and dirt over here. Now of course we need to turn these to whitelists. So there we go, and now when we put all those items in, stone, dirt, cobblestone, and gravel, you'll see that these items will start travelling along, and the stone and the cobblestone will end up in here, and the gravel and the dirt ended up in this chest. So a really, really efficient way of sorting your items. But let's say we didn't want to just, say we wanted to transport from one chest here, to a chest all the way over to the top of that volcano or over to that village over there. Say that we just didn't want to just make tons and tons and tons and tons of pipes. That's why we use the Tesseract. So, let's say for example that we have a chest over here and we want to automatically teleport stuff to that chest over there. We're going to use ourselves a Tesseract. Let's put down an item duct, or let's put down an impulse, um, impulse item duct because they're just quicker, and then we get a Tesseract. As I said, a Tesseract is made from a tesseract frame filled with that liquid ender. So let's go to tesseract. Now back in the old thermal expansion there used to be three types of tesseract for items, fluids and energy, but now they all constitute into one single uh, tesseract, so you can transport energy, liquids and uh, power all at the same time. So really, really cool. So, uh, did I say power liquid energy? I mean uh, items liquid energy. Okay, so here is the configuration. We are only sending items so we want to send items, and we don't want to receive anything. We don't want to receive anything. So let's receive none, and sending items. So really, really configurable here, what you can uh, send and receive. No redstone signal, and we'll say that it's owner only. And then we'll just give this a, uh, you can give it a frequency. So let's say one, and let's call this um, or to chest. So then you add that to the name directory, and then you just press set frequency and it saves it. So there it is. So now what we want to do is just flip that to output. And you can see now that there's a really, really cool um, animation inside there. It's kind of a bit like the end animation. And then we just need to put this other Tesseract up into the top here. Uh, I should also tell you that these item ducts, if it ever can't go anywhere, so let's say that this um, Tesseract got turned off for whatever reason, like we turned it off or we gave it a redstone signal if we told it to turn off or we gave it a redstone signal, then these items do just bounce back. They don't fall out like buildcraft pipes, they work like the old red power pipes in that they just bounce back. So it's really, really cool. 
uh, really, really effective pipes. So now we've got that Tesseract up there, and uh, Whaler's doing a good job telling us uh, what's going on with it. So now we're going to choose Auto Chest, press that, so it's now connected. These two Tesseracts are now connected through the end, and we want to receive items, and we want nothing to do with energy or liquids. So there we go, you can see we're receiving items now. So we can't open that chest, but they'll fall straight into the hopper, so that's fine. So now let's see if this works. Let's put a couple of ore in here. Let's put some iron and some gold. There we go. So they come out of the fluid duct, uh, sorry, the item duct. They'll get teleported across and into the hopper or not. Where have they gone? Receiving items. Hello? Are they here? Are they bouncing around in there without going anywhere? Do we need to flip that to... Hello? Oh, th what the hell? Are they already done? Where did they go? Is it because the uh, thing can't access the chest? Okay, let's see if we can move this. Is this in here? Oh yeah, there we go. Ah, just because the chest was blocked. Wow. Okay, so for some reason hoppers don't work if the chest is blocked above it. That's an interesting uh, thing there. I don't know if that's a bug or not. That must be like a vanilla bug. I don't know. That's a bit strange. Well, anyway. Um, okay, so let's just uh, make it so that we don't interact with fluids or energy and receive only items. So now auto chest should work. So there we go. You can see the... Uh, iron and the gold went through the system pretty easily. Let's try that again without all the vanilla weirdness going on. Gold and iron goes in there, get transported through the item duct, and get put into the chest, which goes into the hopper. You can see the iron's waiting, and uh, now the iron's being cooked because the gold, pulverized gold, is now in the redstone furnace, and that goes across. Really, really cool. Now, of course, hopefully you can see a really, really good use for this using diamond pipes uh, from Billcraft. So you could basically have a chest here, like a like an ender chest or something, and use like an, uh, a diamond pipes or uh, like the sorting system from Billcraft or uh, uh, what's it called AE Applied Energetics to make a system where only ores go through into a chest here. Ores will get pulled into the tesseract and go into your little system here to automatically be smelted into gold and iron. You can see we've also got a piece of ferrous there because sometimes iron ore gives ferrous. That's pretty cool. So that's basically the basics of Tesseracts. You can transport anything you want through them, through to anywhere. You're probably going to need a chunk loader. I don't know if they chunk load themselves, um, but just have a chunk loader there just in case they don't. And you can automatically move items around, uh, teleport them anywhere in the world. They work across dimensions as well, across Mistcraft dimensions, across the nether. So you could have a nether pump uh, with lava uh, being pumped through this Tesseract back home. And you can use the same Tesseract to pump energy to the pump. Um, so that it powers the pump and therefore get more lava. So really, really, really useful uh, item there. So that's pretty much uh, thermal expansion, the basics of it anyway. Uh, really, really cool. Of course, you can actually update uh, this um, this Tesseract even further um, if you use uh, the Ender uh, redstone cell. Uh, so let's just look at that quickly. You can see here that uh, there's no update to the resonant energy conduits, but you can use this resonant energy uh, cell to upgrade your f uh, fuel uh, storage even more. So this stores 50 million uh, RF, which is just a completely insane amount at that point. Uh, so I really... I don't know if I should recommend this. Uh, it's probably for people who have ridiculous amounts of power flowing through their systems. Um, Last thing I should say is that Billcraft Energy cannot work with RF. You cannot produce Billcraft Energy or Industrial Craft Energy and turn it to RF. But RF Energy can be put into Billcraft Machine. So you can hook up a quarry or anything to this system. Uh, I'll show you that quickly now. Let's get a quarry. Or a mining well or something. There we go. Oh, new sound for quarries. Okay, uh, let's just... Um, put it here for now. You can see that um, this works perfectly fine. You can see that the, t the uh, little robot's working fine. So RF can work with Billcraft power, but Billcraft cannot be turned into RF. So it's a pretty um, individual type of energy. So the last block I'm going to show you for the expansion, which I think is really, really useful, is the Terrain Smasher, I think it's called. 
Terrain Smashers, um, they're not too bad to make, just a pickaxe, a piston, and a pneumatic servo. And these, I'd say, are probably awesome for automation of mining. Better than quarries, I'd say. If you just have a ton of these across uh, with a computer craft turtle or a frame system, which you can get with redstone and motion mod, you could just have all of these at diamond level. They don't need any redstone signal, nothing at all. They just output to a chest at the back there. And you will see, if I put down a couple pieces of stuff, put down some stone, Let's get some item ducts. If we get some stone, we can get the item ducts, and we can say, uh, get the item ducts to... We can make some glass, actually, with this system, look. Get the item ducts like that. Pull them out. Well, there you go, there's the quarry going. We can pull this system across like that. And then we just need to flip all of these. Oh, no. oh yeah, there's another thing about item ducts, and I don't know if it works with the uh, redstone energy conduits and liquid ducts, probably liquid ducts, but basically what you can do is these work again like the redstone pipes uh, from Red Power. Uh, if you set it to red, that basically means that um, it's a very dense pipe system. That basically acts as if there's a huge number of pipes in the way. And if you use the um, other type, the vacuum one, it basically means that it basically discounts all the rest of the pipes. Basically, it's like a vacuum, as it says there. It basically sucks things, kind of forces things to go where it is. So that's a good way of sort of automating certain places where you want items to go. So let's just flip all of these to outputs. And the reason I think this would be such an awesome system is because, as you can see, it doesn't need any resonance signal at all. You'll see that they automatically suck up blocks straight away. They just keep destroying blocks right in front of them. So with a good timed frame quarry, you'll probably be able to see that you'll basically be able to completely automate your mining uh, right at diamond level, get tons and tons of awesome ores. So here you go, you can see that all of the stone is just going through these pipes here. Let's add a few impulse ones just to speed up a bit. And you can see that all of the stone will go into there, which in turn goes into this system and will get uh, pulverized into sand, which will then in turn be smelted into glass. So you can pretty much automate glass here, um, which is really, really cool. So you could basically have a little uh, system where you have like cobblestone generators with this next to it, which will just pick up the cobblestone automatically and basically turn it into glass with this little system. So a really nice little system that you can make there. So, I think that's pretty much the end of my little thermal expansion spotlight. Uh, we covered quite a lot there. Um, so yeah, thank you all for watching. Uh, I think the new film expansion is a lot better than the old one. Some really cool new blocks, some loads of cool liquids, loads of cool new pipes. I love all the different types of pipes you can get. The tesseracts are awesome. Uh, the redstone, uh, the energy production is really good. And all of the creative mode stuff that helps you test out um, certain aspects of the mod are really, really useful as well. And of course those can integrate with forestry and things like that to make it a lot easier to test out mods and test out your designs for your real world, your survival world. So thank you all for watching this Thermal Expansion Mod Spotlight, and uh, we might do some more sp Mod Spotlights in the future, I just wanted to do this one because I thought Thermal Expansion is really, really cool now. So yeah, we might do an Ars Magica Spotlight because I'm a big fan of Ars Magica right now, I'm having a look at it. Uh, maybe a bit of Thomcraft 4 as well, because that's really cool. But thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time, possibly an FTV Unleashed, or a new series which is coming up to replace our Divine RPG. So yeah, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye!